per clinician. He is also the director of our private practice research department and has and started that in uh, 1994. So that is a 16-year endeavor now, Roger, correct? At least. At least. <laughs> An active and successful program. These ladies over here on the third row on the left are part of our research department. They are superb bright ladies who are very dedicated to, to the endeavor. Roger is uh, a graduate of the uh, University of Missouri, Kansas City. He went to that uh, integrated program where you get through college and med school over a six year period. So the bachelor's and medical degrees from that institution. Subsequent to that, he moved to Dallas and trained at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical School. That day inclusive of the chief residency there. And subsequent to that, was at Duke for several years where he did his cardiology fellowship as well as a fellowship in both cardiac intervention and peripheral intervention. Roger's interests, aside from being a superb clinician and a researcher, are that he remains very active in coronary intervention, but also in terms of peripheral arterial disease, device therapy for that critical limb ischemia, and it is a pleasure to have you speak, sir. Thank you, John. It's an honor to be here, and uh, we've been so excited about this event coming. Because, um, uh, I've been involved with this organization for years, so after David and I kind of found each other, which um, I don't know how we didn't before then, we've been doing stem cell research for about four years here in Austin, and he's here, and uh, just one day he called me out of the blue, and uh, we ended up meeting up and have done some things together. I believed in the mission of the organization. Uh, part of it, of course, being the funding nice part, which is so critical, but also the educational part, because there are so many, so many misconceptions about stem cell research and the ethical issues, and yet, as you've heard today, every one of these talks has been about adult stem cell therapy, and so, um, that's my daughter, <laughs> we won't talk about that. <laughs> She's actually pointing at the house. <laughs> And so uh, I also want to thank you all for your enthusiasm for staying the whole day like this uh, without a break. It's pretty impressive, but I think as you've seen, this is incredibly exciting stuff. We're on the verge of something, I think, um, huge in medicine that we've just, uh, it's a revolution, not an evolution, I think. Um, you've seen that there's really positive results now with stem cell trials, um, both in the United States and elsewhere. And uh, it's in the, in the clinics now, um, as, as in our instance, we're here in Austin, Texas, a large cardiology group, but we have an active clinical research site. And it requires this type of collaboration between undergraduate programs, uh, medical schools, and the large uh, private practice organizations that can deliver a lot of patients to these trials. We've been uh, the highest enroller in a lot of uh, clinical trials for cardiac uh, solutions, including um, some of the things I'll show you here today. And so um, it's that collaboration that I think is key. Um, because I am the last speaker and we've gone through a lot of this, I'm not going to have to, to cover all of it. Um, I'll buzz through the slides. I've got a lot of information here because I get so excited. Uh, I always want to show people everything. But uh, um, we will cover a little bit about what I think the potential uh, cardiac applications are. And cardiac to us includes vascular disease. Um, and I don't have to talk much about the definition. I think by now you know that uh, stem cells are a self-renewing population um, that can differentiate into a lot of different types of uh, cells in your body depending on what type they started out. The embryonic, of course, can become an entire organism. The adult, which is what we'll be talking about today, are, uh, can give rise to a lot of different cell types and it really starts out as two different cell types the blastocyst and then the that becomes an entire organism and then the, in, in the adult you have the hematopoietic and the zancomal uh, cell lines and the zancomal is what we're going to be talking about because it can become all these uh, type of cells the other ones are, are more relevant to cancer therapy and uh, as the last slide shows these are some of the different uh, tissues that adult mesenchymal stem cells can differentiate into. And this slide I like because it just kind of explains what Dr. Willerson was talking about early on, that our bodies are full of stem cells. Um, and our, early in our life, when there's a, an injury, um, we can respond to it with very little inflammation, a lot of regeneration and repair the process, and create very little fibrosis through that. 
But as we get older, our stem cells aren't as numerous, they're not as healthy. Uh, as you've heard today, particularly if you have diabetes, end-stage renal failure, things like that may affect the health of your own stem cells. So you create a lot more inflammation and, and ultimately fibrosis, and you don't regenerate as much. And so what mesenchymal stem cells has a potential to do, if you can either augment your own cells or deliver someone else's cells, is get this back more towards uh, what you were as an infant, potentially repair and regenerate. Um, this is a, a busy slide, but it, it basically is saying a, a very fascinating thing about mesenchymal stem cells is that you, there's no problem with rejection. Um, it's even safer than a blood transfusion where you have to blood type people because there's cell surface and antigens that can be recognized and rejected. Um, when we do mesenchymal stem cell infusions from a healthy donor, um, we don't even worry what the blood type was of the donor or the recipient because it doesn't matter. You don't reject these cells. Uh, and this just kind of shows why that's true. There's Normally there's uh, receptors on the cell surface and then you release these co-stimulatory co -stimulatory signals that uh, cause rejection. But uh, you lack the receptors and you don't make the co-stimulatory uh, signals and so you don't reject someone else's mesenchymal stem cells. And then once they're there, you've heard all this today too, that they do a lot of things. When people first hear about stem cells, your automatic uh, understanding would be that they just go somewhere and regenerate uh, the, the tissue completely. But it turns out that the other factors, that the, the other um, abilities that they have are maybe even more important than that regeneration. Uh, the ability to, re to secrete growth factors that uh, in our business are important because they can help you grow new blood vessels. Um, but also the anti-inflammatory um, process is extremely important. They release uh, cytokines that block the inflammation process and uh, that's very important as you're healing a heart attack, which turns out to be a very uh, large amount of inflammation. It could be important in inflammatory bowel diseases, degenerative arthritis, things like that that are really characterized by a lot of inflammation, chronic lung disease. And so there's really a, a triad of things that they do with uh, the tissue protective effect, which really comes from this anti-inflammatory effect so that you don't cause as much fibrosis and cell destruction late. Um, but also the cytokines, the TNF suppression, things like that really reduce inflammation in a targeted way at the site where, where inflammation is occurring. And then the tissue regeneration, of course, is the ultimate uh, pie in the sky is that you could actually regenerate the tissue that has been damaged along the way. Um, and then this busy slide also just says some of that again, but is talking about how this is a very local, targeted, and moderated uh, response that they do, as opposed to drugs. When we give anti-inflammatory drugs, whether they're non-steroidals, steroidals, or some of the very toxic uh, anti-inflammatories um, that we give, they, they, they affect your entire body, of course, and, and suppress your immune system, make you prone to uh, infections. But that's not true of stem cells. They go to where they're needed. They do their anti-inflammatory response, and then when the inflammation's gone, they stop that work. And so they're, they're smart about the way they work. Um, and that's basically what that one says, too. So I've, I've already mentioned some of the potential uses of this. We're going to be talking about the cardiac applications, but there's a huge amount of interest in using this in joint therapy with the uh, inflammatory uh, degenerative arthritis type of problems, um, potential to regrow cartilage, tendons, things like that, and, and we're already seeing uses for that. And then things like inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, or maybe a, a great application for that. Um, and this one just shows uh, evidence of that uh, ability of stem cells to respond to an area and uh, do their anti-inflammatory effect, but as soon as the inflammatory source is gone, the stem cells stop their uh, cytokine production too, so it really is targeted and, and moderated. Um, and so this is kind of a, a simple therapeutic model that we think may be applicable as, as we learn a lot more about stem cells. And this is something we've been involved with through a company called Osiris. They, they take stem cells from a healthy donor, um, probably a medical student, because that's how you made money in high school. <laughs> either donates some of your secretions or, or your bone marrow and uh, uh, then the cultures are grown up to produce actually over 10,000 doses of stem cells can be uh, produced from one single aspiration and then this is packaged frozen and in the first phase study that we did it was shipped to us after we had identified an appropriate patient 
in the study that we're doing now, we have it on site in a freezer, and so when we have a qualifying patient, we can take that out and thaw it, and then some of the packages are, are active cells, and some are placebo, and there's uh, people at our site that are unblinded. I'm blinded, and the patient's blinded, so it's, you know, appropriately done study. And th these are some of the pipelines that that company, Osiris, is pursuing. I mentioned the, the arthritis thing uh, for uh, the products called chondrogen, but these are some of the other things. Interestingly, I mean, we mentioned type 1 diabetes, but acute radiation syndrome, they have a uh, large contract now from the government because it looks like if there's ever a nuclear bomb or a dirty bomb and you have radiation exposure, the stem cells may be your best defense against that. They can uh, go to the area and fight the inflammation that occurs. Um, but all, uh, some of the other things I mentioned, and we'll talk a lot about uh, the acute myocardial infarction, and they don't just come from bone marrow. Um, as you've heard today, uh, stem cells are in your peripheral blood. There's a way to augment that to where you have more of them and then, and then harvest those. And then there's uh, other, other potential sources, too, here that I, I can mention briefly. The, the bone marrow is really attractive, though, because there's a lot of cells there of different types. You can harvest it and rapidly process it. But another Potential application would be menstrual blood. Uh, menstrual blood, as you can imagine, is full of stem cells that are constantly regenerating the endometrium and creating blood vessels, the angiogenesis that we need in our field. And so those cells uh, may be very useful someday for, for what we do. Um, an interesting place where you also have stem cells is in your fat tissue. Um, and so that uh, there's companies now that are working on ways to harvest uh, your, your fat and basically a liposuction type procedure, spin it down, take off the useful stem cells, and then you could imagine giving that back to you. So I can envision someday when there'll be clinics of uh, regenerative therapy where people go in and get this done, and, and you know, some of us may have more ability to do this than others. <laughs> But uh, I think for now we can see that uh, some of the therapies that we've done in the past really were, were just a start compared to what I, I think we're going to see in, in the future with stem cells.